wondered whether um, actually there was anything personal you thought that uh, Godfrey Reggio had produced or, or brought, to, brought to his particular version of the film, or whether there's any kind of connection there. Well, I mean, he says that he, he was in a, a sort of a, a Christian fellowship. He was a monk, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a monk for 14 years. And I think, you know, that kind of spirituality is, you know, hovering. The critics of this film, I shouldn't start by saying the, what the critics of this film, the, the negativity about this film, but you know, there, there is some people think it's, it's a, a sort of easy, cod, spiritual film. Um, but I think, anyway, the, the Koyana Scotsy, I think, is just, you just got to let it wash over you, you know. It's what graphic designers drop acid to. It's, it's uh, <laughs> but it is, the, it had a huge impact on me when I saw it in 1982 when it came out. I read a review of it in The Face magazine, which was the Bible for the suburban wannabe fashionable person at the time. And, and the Metropolitan Elite, I think. Yeah. Well, there you go. I had aspirations. You know, I had a very clean life path <laughs> set up. And, <laughs> and anyway, so I, I read this review and I thought, wow, this sounds, this sounds like my sort of film. And I went to see it and I was completely blown away to use the cliche or buy it. it. It really had a huge impact on me, which still, you know, that film I made only about 15 years ago of me making the pot, but it, it stuck with me. What, what, what blew you away about it in, in 82? Did it seem radical filmmaking or did it suggest a kind of artistic vision that you wanted to, to pursue? I think it just sort of, you know, I, it was the time, I mean, it was 82, uh, pop videos were just getting going, and I, th you know, I enjoyed, I was just starting to make films myself, you know, my first, when I left art college, I thought I was going to be a filmmaker, I lived in a house full of filmmakers, I knew uh, John Mabry and Derek Jarman and Kerry Fwyn Evans, and, and we all sort of made films, you know, and... Um, were they all blown away by it as well? I don't know what they thought of it, they, I mean, I mean Kerry used to say his inspiration was perfume adverts, but... Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, it's nothing like my films that I made. I mean, I had a little clockwork Super 8 camera that I used to use. And, um, but I was interested in just, because of the nature of Super 8, you know, we didn't, my first films, they were all silent, so you used music. So that idea, and we used to have evenings where we'd all show each other our films and just play records. And suddenly this film came along, and it was like, oh, my God, you know, this was really to the max of doing this. You know, you've got Philip Glass to write your soundtrack, you know, and... and uh, in, if you look at the, um, the DVD that goes with the, the film, you know, and he, he talks about the fact that they, they approached Philip Glass to make this thing, and he said, I don't do soundtracks. And then they show him and say, hey, it looks really good. We're playing it along with some of your music. It looks great, doesn't it? And he goes, yeah, it does, you know. And then he, he wrote the music to the film, and then they recut the film to the music. And, and so, you know, that's, that's sort of the way it works together. It, Symbiotic, I think. Yeah, and it's the, it's, the, it's, it's the, I suppose you can, you can get all lost in what the film means or whatever. But Godfrey Reggio says you shouldn't do that. I think you should just let it wash over you. That It's beautiful, it's, it's, the, it's beautiful music, and the, 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 the pictures just go with it, and you just go, ah, uh, and just let it wash over you. Yeah, he does, and, and actually he then says that the meaning is for the individual beholder, which you may say is very profound or is a complete and utter cop-out. Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, that's, you know, it, it, but it doesn't stop the film, I think, 32 years later, still being amazing. I mean, I haven't watched it deliberately in the lead-up to this because I haven't seen it for at least five years, so I'm sort of looking forward to seeing it in the cinema and... It, 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 I think it's, it's the bits that really, really move me in it are towards the end when he's doing the portraits of the people in the crowd and the sort of, the sort of humanity of it, and the music gets all very kind of um, more low-key then as well. Um, and it's part of a, it's a, part of a uh, trilogy, and this is by far the best one. I mean, Power Scotty is okay. I recently saw the, the third one in the trilogy, and it was, I didn't think it was much cop at all. We, was this part of your own... Um, creative journey where that kind of approach which verged on the pretentious was something that was important to you at the time I mean do you plead guilty retrospectively to pretentiousness or actually will you defend this film to the hilt and say even now it's not dated that much it makes a kind of pr statement about process and also about man's relationship with arms and so on that still seems yes resonant. in some ways it's very prophetic I think it, for you know it, it kind of it, post 9-11 and, po and the internet age, it, it seems even more relevant than us. Sure. Yeah, and so all those sort of things, you know, and it, it, it can kind of seem like, you know, the wet dream of someone who goes to a lot of conspiracy websites. <laughs> you know, it looks a bit like that. But I think that, you know, if, if you just see it as a piece of sort of National Geographic filmmaking with some beautiful, very accessible modern classical music put cut to it, 
it, it works just fine, and there's a humanity about it, you know, and I think that if you ignore some of the cliche things like the sort of analogies between, um, say, a city and a circuit board, and or, um, you know, um, sausages production. coming out of a machine and people going down escalators, these things can get in the way a bit, really, because they, they sort of almost engage a different part of your brain. They, you, you become too kind of rational about it. And, but if you just sort of enjoy the poetry of it, then I think it's a top film. Funny you mentioned poetry. I'm glad you did, because I'd like to go on to that. There's no, there's no language, there's no dialogue of any kind. And actually, um, Reggio said he felt language was, was humiliated, I think, was his phrase at the time. Um, I think when people talk about visual things as being poetry, it can either be very profound or meaningless. Um, did this feel very original to you as a form of visual poetry when you saw it? Yeah, because a lot of the kind of techniques, I mean, time lapse and slow motion, you know, they're, they're, they're standard issue film things, but the way they're used and the imagination that they're put to, uh, you know, at the time was, 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 I found a revelation, you know, of course, every bloody documentary now has, has got a, a bit of this film in it. Every advert, car adverts particularly, you know, as looks like this film. You know, every film where they have a shot on the Millennium Bridge of people going <laughs> like that, or traffic going like that, you know, it's, it's straight out of this, this movie. But, you know, it, when this came out, it was a revelation, you know, that someone had put so much effort. I mean, Ron Fricky, the, you know, he needs as much celebration as Godfrey Reggio, because he is the heart and soul of the film, really. His uh, cinematography in it is astounding. Coppola gave his name to the film, didn't he? He was so taken with it that he said, use my name in the promotion of it. Did that, have, did that cut a kind of um, dash to you in, in, in those days? I probably or? wouldn't have known who Coppola was. Living in a house <laughs> with John Mabry and Kelvin <laughs> Evans. I was a nerdy little kind of new romantic, you know. <laughs> probably still recovering from acid. <laughs> at the time, so like for the, yeah, this film is, you know, like I say, it's, it has. It, 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 you could interpret it as a kind of psychedelia, in some ways. I mean, a lot of people dismiss it as that, but I think it's, it's. I think it's got enough real meat to it and solid meaning and art in it that it lifts it above that. We we've not talked about this film at all. We're just talking about it now, for about three more minutes. So I, I can ask you this question, but not in an arch way, without kind of knowing the answer. But you know, you've chosen this as your epiphany, you know, your film epiphany. There must be many films that would be contenders. Was this something you thought, actually, it was very important to me, but actually it stood the test of time, and it's a more interesting thing to think about now, and I would like people to look at it and consider it. Or was this really the singular film of all films that you saw that had the biggest and most significant impact on you? Yeah, it is. I mean, I didn't hesitate when I, when I was asked to do this. This was a film that throughout my life, I've seen it more than any other film. I listen to the soundtrack probably at least a couple of times a year. Um, and it, uh, it, I think I still enjoy this sort of film. Whenever I see a film like there was that one recently, is it Kevin McDonald's film, One Day or whatever it was? Films like that. Any film that has that kind of monumentality but it isn't stuck to a narrative but is also willing to address you know, sort of poetic documentary I suppose and I think this is a, a masterpiece of that genre you don't see that many of these sort of films around films that are not you know they're not they're not didactic in the ways that there's not a guy at the front of it telling you what this all means and stuff you know it does allow you space to make up your mind about it I mean they talk about the gap between the music and the film and that's where you're meant to kind of you know, you're meant to ponder, you know, because they're, they're not kind of welded together. They just happen to fit very, very aesthetically nicely together. Have you met um, Godfrey Reggio? No, I don't know if I want to. Oh. Meeting your heroes is not good. He's probably, he's probably a bit of a nerd. And I've seen the third film now as well, so I'd, I'd have to kind of... <laughs> 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 I'd probably have to have, some, have words. And this, re <laughs> and this recent film, Visitors... Where he, there's people's faces, which sounds very Gillian Waring, as it was described to me by the Yeah, the Times. world's moved on. I think that's the thing with this film. It's very interesting for people who have not seen this film, I think. You know, what you think of it now, 32 years after it was released. Um, I, you know, I've, I've seen a few clips recently, and I still think it holds up. And, and Ron Fricky made a couple of films, which actually, aesthetically, I think, I've not seen Samsara, but he did one called Baraka, which is, was, I liked very much. So I think that, you know, that style of... I think nowadays, now that we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't watch pop videos so much, I still like the image and music thing working. It, f it feels, for me, 
If, if, I, if I had the budget, I'd like to make a version of, it, of this film. And how would that manifest itself if money were no object? Oh, I'd get my favourite musicians to sort of write songs, which I would then, you know, think, and I'd, we'd work together collaboratively to make and a 21st on a kind of century version of this. Cosmological IMAX, scale, be, yeah, cosmological scale. Yeah, it'd be fun. You could make, yeah, I think you could still do it. But this is, you know, pretty good. I don't know if I could do it better than this. <laughs> Again, I was being arch, actually. I was thinking, well, we've got... American Express sponsoring this, <laughs> the PFI. We've got an audience that may support this. My, this my, could be the project. My problem, happen. though, actually, one of my films is, is actually going to be shown here, I think, in a few, uh, because the PFI very sweetly, and surprisingly to me, have um, restored one of my old Super 8s. And um, yeah, I think the trouble is in my film, I'd have to make it funny as well. So I'd have to do Koyana Scotsy meets with Nail and I would be kind of <laughs> my film, I think. <laughs>